Hi, I'm Bon Anjali Palamike, CPA, and welcome to my channel. Hi class, so now we're on the chapter 4 of business combination. So the topic for uh, this chapter 4 is the elimination of unrealized profit in intercompany sales of inventory. So it will be divided into 5 parts. So magkakaroon tayo ng 5 videos discussing yung ating chapter 4. So first is the introduction about what is unrealized gain and ano ba tong ini-eliminate natin na to. And ana uh, uh, magkakaroon tayo ng isang illustration about uh, illustration for the one we're in walang unrealized profit para makita muna natin yung simple version. Then on the next video is magkakaroon na tayo ng uh, downstream. Downstream, explain natin later what's downstream. Then for the three, partial method, full goodwill approach, and equity method. Okay, so to start sa ating part one na ating elimination of unrealized profit in intercompany sales of inventory, uh, we will now tackle ano ba tong unrealized, ano ba tong pinag-uusapan natin. So let's say si parent and si subsidiary, usually kasi sila mismo nagbebentahan. So kunyari si parent, siya yung nagbebenta kay subsidiary ng mga inventory or something na pinagbebenta niya. So let's say, eto si parent, meron siyang binili worth 100K. Binenta niya kay subsidiary for 125,000. Subsidiary, pwedeng ibenta niya ulit niya sa iba. So, nagkakaroon ng intercompany sales between the parent and subsidiary. So, coming from previous chapters, we understand that uh, pagdating sa consolidated FS, dapat as if walang transaction na nangyayari sa kanilang dalawa kasi pareha sila within the same group. Kung baga, kung nagiging isa ka na lang, bakit ka magbebentahan sa sarili mo? So, in the first place, ini-eliminate natin yung ganong klaseng transaction. So, when it happens, magkakaroon ka ng elimination entry sa ating consolidated FS. So, from the viewpoint of consolidated entity, yung profit is hindi ire-report unless mabenta na siya in the outside party. So, yung example ko, let's say 100,000, binenta niya ng 125,000 kay subsidiary, may recognize lang yung profit kapag si subsidiary binenta niya na in the outside party. So, kailan nangyayari yung unrealized profit? So, nangyayari yun kapag hindi pa nabibenta kay subsidiary kasi di ba realized is kapag sold na. So, kapag sold na, okay na, hindi mo na kailangan eliminate. Pero, kapag unsold, kailangan mong mag-eliminate. Oh. So, may sample tayo dito under illustration 4-1. So, isa itong downstream sales. So, before that, we need to understand what is downstream and upstream sales. Downstream is, uh, as the word itself, kumbaga, mula kay parent, papunta kay subsidiary. So, downstream is sales. Pag upstream naman yung sales, mula kay subsidiary, binibentahan niya si parent. Meron din kayong tawag na horizontal, wherein yung mga subsidiaries or yung mga uh, entities within the group, pero hindi parent subsidiary, is nagbebenta. So, horizontal lang. So, yun yung tatlong klase ng sales. Downstream, up, upstream, and the horizontal. So, for our first illustration, isa itong downstream sales. So, ibig sabihin, the parent sold an inventory to the subsidiary. Wherein, magkakaroon ka ng eliminating entry. So, regardless, diba? If you can imagine, sabi dito, wala daw unrealized. Pero hindi ibig sabihin, wala ka nang eliminate So in the first place, i-eliminate mo yung inventory na binenta ni parent, yung subsidiary, kasi dapat hindi sila nagbentahan sa point of view ni consolidated. Okay, so for this example, si P company, binenta niya yung mga goods, so nagbenta siya ng inventory kay subsidiary at 125% of cost. So yung cost daw ni P dito sa pagbili niya is 100,000. Tapos, binenta niya kay S Company for 125000 So, it is a downstream sale. Then, during the year, itong si S, binenta ulit niya sa third party for 135000 So, if you can see, uh, kinubuan lang ni S Company ng 10000 Tapos, binenta niya na in the outside. So, pag nabenta na in the outside, doon natin sinasabing wala tayong unrealized uh, gain na kailangan i-eliminate. Pero, yung bentahan nila sa isa't isa is kailangan pa rin natin eliminate. So, let's see kung paano ba rin record ni parent sa kanyang libro yung ginawa niyang transaction. So, ang gagawin ni, ni parent sa P-Books is debit accounts receivable 
for 125,000 and credit to sales for 125,000. Ito yung pagbenta ni parent is subsidiary. Ito yung i-record niya sa kanyang individual books. Next. Si S naman, si subsidiary. Ang magiging entry niya is debit purchase kasi may binili siya, di ba, na 125,000 and credit accounts payable. So, nagre-record sila under individual books kasi yun yung actual transaction nila. Pero, pagdating sa consolidated natin, kailangan natin i-eliminate. So, lalabas ang ating eliminating entry na kailangan pabaliktad na ito. Debit, sales, so to offset or tanggalin yung sales and credit to purchases, 125,000. So, ma'am, ba't hindi natin ini-eliminate yung mga kabangga nila, yung A, R, and A, P? Kasi meron tayong assumption muna dito sa problem lang na to na fully paid na. Pero in case hindi pa fully paid, let's say, incidentally, if S company still owes P company 40,000, so dito sa 125,000 payable, kung meron pa daw dito yung 40,000 na hindi pa bayad at the end of the year, yun lang yung kailangan mong i-eliminate, yung intercompany payable payable and receivable. So, you need to debit accounts payable. So, bakit debit? Kasi ang normal balance is credit and to eliminate it, you need to debit it. Debit 40,000 and credit accounts receivable for 40,000. Okay. So, ito yung illustration ha, nung nangyari para ma-picture out natin kung paano yung naging entry and ano yung naging impact niya if hindi yun natin siya may eliminate. So, sales. Kay S Company, nag-record siya ng 125,000 sales. And ang cost niya doon is 100,000. Si, si Pito, si S Company naman, which is si subsidiary, nagkaroon siya ng sales na 135,000 nung binenta niya in the outside party. Ang cost niya doon is kung magkano binenta sa kanya ni parent kasi doon na niya nakuha yung amount, yung 125,000. Tapos, nag-eliminate tayo. In-eliminate natin itong sale ni S kay P, ay ni P, ni parent kay subsidiary and in-eliminate din natin itong cost of sale. So, ito yung in-eliminate natin kasi ito yung transaction nila sa isa't isa. So, yung 135,000 na sale ni S sa outside, hindi niya kailangan eliminate kasi outside party. Ang kailangan mo lang eliminate is yung mga inside the group. Okay. So, no unrealized, sabi dito, no unrealized intercompany profit. Walang unrealized kasi wala namang hindi pa nabenta. Kasi 100% yung binili niya, binenta niya. Walang naiwang profit sa loob ng group. Ang kailangan malang i-eliminate is yung sale and purchases. Unlike dito sa next example natin, actually sa next video, meron na tayong naiwan kasi let's say 60% lang yung nabenta niya, may naiwan, doon na papasok yung unrealized profit. Pero regardless, we still need to uh, discuss this since meron tayong uh, eliminating entry na 125,000 to uh, tanggalin natin yung sales and cost of goods sold. Okay. Ang kung may kita mo dito, same amount yung sales and cost of goods sold. And hindi maapektuhan yung net income regardless kung gawin mo to or hindi. Ang mga overstate lang is yung sales and cost of sales. So, net income is not affected by the failure to eliminate intercompany sales. So, ang mangyayari lang is, ayan, sabi dito, overstatement of sales, overstatement of cost of goods sold. Tapos dito, may computation din siya dito ng uh, gross profit rate na nakuha mo. So, dahil dun sa um, after elimination, 25.93% gross profit rate, which is 35,000 divided by 135,000. So, let's say hindi mo ito ginawa, pero tinanong ka, magkano yung intercompany sales? So, alam mo, take note, ang intercompany sales mo is yung sales mo lang sa outside party. Ang intercompany cost of goods sold mo is yung totoong cost sa point of view group. So, di ba ang tataka ka, bakit hindi yung 125 yung cost of goods sold? Eh, yun yung bilhin ng subsidiary. Hindi. Kasi yun is may patong na yun. Ang titignan mo cost of goods sold is sa naka-consolidated point of view ka na. No? So, Si parent is subsidiary, isa na. So, magkano ba yung cost nila talaga? 100,000, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, yung totoong cost of goods sold is 100,000. And yung 25,000, which is 135 less 100,000, is yun lang talaga yung uh, naging income dito. Okay. So, ito is yun nga, illustration ng walang uh, unrealized profit. 
So, stay tuned sa ating next video para dun sa merong unrealized profit and paano magiging eliminating entry natin. So, thank you!